Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Let's get to work. Witness day. Come on. One of the most powerful arguments against Islam comes from one of Muhammad's early scribes. Allah would give a revelation to his messenger Gabriel, then Gabriel would pass the revelation on to Muhammad, then Muhammad would recite the revelation to his followers and they would try to memorize it. But memorizing it was difficult, so a scribe would write down the revelation. A man named Abdullah ibn Sa'd ibn Abi Sar converted to Islam and became one of Muhammad's scribes. But he eventually left Islam and became an apostate. Why did a man who learned the Quran from Muhammad himself decide to become an ex-Muslim? It wasn't because he wanted to drink beer, or because he wanted to eat pork, or because he was being paid by the Jews. It was because he had indisputable proof that Muhammad was a false prophet. When the verses regarding the believers were revealed, Verily, we created man from a product of wet earth, this is the passage about the creation of man in Surah 23, 12 through 14, the prophet dictated them to him. When he reached up to, verse 14, which says, and then produced it as another creation, Abdullah expressed his amazement at the precision of man's creation by saying, so blessed be Allah, the best of creators. So, Muhammad is delivering revelations about the creation of man, and Abdullah, who's writing down these revelations and finally learning about how Allah created man, exclaims, so blessed be Allah, the best of creators. Now watch what happens. The messenger of Allah, Allah bless him and give him peace, said, this, Abdullah's last expression, is how it was revealed to me. In other words, Muhammad said, Abdullah, your words, so blessed be Allah, the best of creators, those words you spoke were just revealed to me as part of this verse. At that point, doubt crept into Abdullah. He said, if Muhammad is truthful, then I was inspired just as he was. And if he is lying, I have uttered exactly what he did utter. Hence Allah's words in 693, and who saith, I will reveal the like of that which Allah hath revealed. The man renounced Islam. This is also the opinion of Ibn Abbas, according to the report of Al-Kalbi. Okay, so we can finally start. I'd like to share some thoughts. Um, this is, yes, of course, this is attributed to Ibn Abbas by Al-Kalbi. Who is Al-Kalbi? Um, it's not David Wood. Uh, Al-Kalbi is Muhammad ibn Sa'ib. Uh, Al Kalbi, who was uh, an early Mufassir, um, and of course as in Deeq as well. Um, I'm going to be reading some parts from uh, Tahdib al Tahdib by Ibn Hajar. Um, he quotes uh, Layth bin Abi Sulaym, who says that in Al Kufa there were two liars. Of course, there are more than two liars in Al Kufa. However, the two main liars, one of them is Al Kalbi. Uh, Zaida says there are three people that I will not narrate anything from, one of them is Al-Kalbi. He says that when uh, he was, he says that Al-Kalbi once, when sick, um, got so sick that he forgot all of his narrations. So what he did was he went to the household, or one of the members of the household of the Prophet, peace be upon him, who spat into his mouth, and due to that spit, he um, magically remembered everything that he had forgotten. Zaida, who is an early scholar, says, Due to this, I will never narrate from Al-Kalbi. Abu Awana said, I heard Al-Kalbi narrate something that was kufr, uh, and when I spoke to him and when I asked him about it, he denied ever saying it. Abu Amr bin Ala says, I swear by Allah that Al-Kalbi is a kafir. Sufyan al-Thawri says that Al-Kalbi said, Whatever I narrate from Abu Saleh, from Ibn Abbas, is a lie. So you have Al-Kalbi himself admitting that he used to lie um, in regards to what he narrated through to Ibn Abbas. Abu Hatim al-Razi says that there's a consensus to reject the narrations of Al-Kalbi. Al-Jawzajani said that he's a liar, and Al-Hakim said that Al-Kalbi narrated from Abu Saleh fabrications, and so on and so forth. Abdullah became an apostate, but not for long because Muhammad eventually conquered Mecca and demanded Abdullah's head for causing him so much embarrassment. 
Fortunately for Abdullah, he was Uthman's foster brother, so Uthman interceded for him. The story of how Abdullah survived is pretty hilarious. I'll make a separate video about that. But Abdullah was loyal to his foster brother Uthman for saving him. During the caliphate of Uthman, Abdullah even became the Muslim governor of Egypt. But notice, when Abdullah was free to decide what to believe, he said to himself, there's no way Muhammad is a prophet. If Muhammad is a prophet, then I'm a prophet too, and I know I'm not a prophet, so Muhammad's not a prophet. I renounce Islam. Only with a sword to his neck would Abdullah become a faithful Muslim. And here we see why even Muslims... I'd like to point something out here. Um, David is trying to make it seem as if Abdullah bin Sa'ad uh, remained um, an apostate within or a hypocrite within, and, and that's quite far away from the truth. Um, Abdullah bin Sa'ad, even before um, holding his position as the governor of Egypt, uh, held a position during the time of Umar bin Khattab. He was Umar's representative on a side, so it's not like this is just a matter of nepotism. Al-Baghawi in Mu'jam al-Sahaba narrates that Abdullah bin Sa'ad um, passed away while in prayer. Um, so there is no reason to believe that Abdullah bin Sa'ad still disbelieved in Islam. Yes, he did initially disbelieve. We don't know why. We don't have the reasons as to why he disbelieved. However, it has nothing to do with the narration that David Wood has narrated. Abdullah bin Sa'ad, as a governor of Sa'id, as a governor of Egypt, um, put his life on the line, spreading Islam. He was a, a real Muslim. He was a devout Muslim. He was someone who performed his prayers. He was someone that put his life on the line, again, to spread Islam. There's no reason to assume that he was a hypocrite within. Believe it or not, David, some people end up leaving Islam, but come back to Islam because they believe in it. A good example of that is a friend of yours or someone who used to be a friend of yours, C.L. Edwards, who was a co-host on your show, Jesus or Muhammad, and when he came back to Islam, trust me, it wasn't because someone put a sword to his neck. After seven years of being a devout Christian, he returned back to Islam simply because he found truth in Islam. So, to summarize, Abdullah bin Sa'id bin Abi Sarh did not become an apostate for the reason that David mentioned. Uh, we do not know the circumstances of his apostasy. However, he did come back to Islam stronger than ever before, and he was a devout Muslim until he passed away once again in prayer as a devout Muslim. And that's all I have for today. Inshallah, you enjoyed this one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. One of the most powerful arguments against Islam. One of the most powerful arguments against Islam. One of the most powerful arguments against Islam.